like I make fun of everybody, you but know. But go into the preference thing, man. Let's yeah, talk about I, what I make fun of everybody. So it's like fuck that preferences, they, bro. Preferences. Like, yeah, I, I yeah, here's know. where I'm coming from. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a problem. Well, I'm not saying I don't have a problem with the joke, but I have empathy for trying to be funny, mm -hmm. and then it comes out fucked up, and then everybody's on your neck. Exactly. That's something. Yes. Yeah. Al can speak to, to black shit a lot more. I can speak to yo. You're trying to be funny. It comes out fucked up. That's not what you meant. What I don't like, what I find corny as fuck, is my preference is not my women. Now I thought it was I'm not dating my women period which is the corniest human being outside of a criminal to me period it's just those are your roots those women are reflected in your roots so if you're saying hey i don't generally date them but i have i have more space for it even though i still think it's a little corny between that's just my thing the, like, all right, i have a question about this and this is not I, I i mean this in all sincerity i have a question about this i understand what he's saying i honestly do but we live in the United States, brother. In fact, Akash was born in Texas, I believe. I, lo I looked at his background. Sorry, I did a background check on you. You're an American, dude. I know it's you want to say, well, I'm an Indian, I'm this. And you've his in his wedding pictures and everything, he's very much very proud of his, his ethnicity and his heritage. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be. You should. That's fine. Um, it, it's tribalism. There's nothing that you're going to do to change that. That's part of the human machine. Why I'm, I'm, this is where I, by the way, this is where I will fundamentally split with people like even God sod. I don't know, maybe, maybe not, but certainly Dr. Jordan Peterson, who's all about the individual and how tribalism is bad and Brett Weinstein and Heather Hang, tribalism, bad, you know, community, uh, egalitarianism, good. No, no. And you're not going to, you're not going to take that out. Of, you can take the human out of the tribe, but you can't take the tribe out of the human. And this is a really, a, a really good example of this. Now, my question is this, is I, and I want it, guys, it, it, Myron and Fresh, you're probably all going to watch this. So I'm going to ask, I was going to ask you a question on the, the call in show the other day. Um, do you think that there is, uh, do you think that there's sort of this tribalist, tribalistic, like solidarity that is being applied, particularly in the black community, in black, in the black manosphere? Because the number one com complaint I hear from guys when they come at fresh and they come at Myron and stuff, it, it's uh, it, they they think that the the black women that are on the show are 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 being brought down or we need to lift them up i've heard kevin samuel say stuff like this as well he's like well you know i want to raise up my black sisters blah 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 so now it's become solidarity of tribe okay now akash here is going here and later he's going to talk about how you know i i i don't i would only date an indian woman because you know we got to lift our our sisters and our our, our tribal you know affiliations up and to me Having grown up in inner city Los Angeles for, you know, as a kid and really, I, I, I don't, I'm like, whatever, you know, I'll, I'll date black girls. I'll date Vietnamese girls made a big impression on me, by the way. Um, you know, white girls, Latina girls, whatever. I'm good. Are you hot? Yeah. Are you available? <laughs> That's, I'm good to go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, but it's not so much, uh, you know, and now granted, did I marry a white woman? Yes, I did. Of course. But it's not like I wouldn't have considered, you know, marrying a black woman or well, as well as just that's where it was at. And that was, you know, my, it was within my environment and within my, uh, the culture or the city that I was in, or it's, a lot of people end up like with, when they get married, it's usually out of family or it's out of, it used to be anyways, it used to be family connections. It used to be church connections. It used to be uh, work and school connections as well. And so what do you do in those, in, in those settings? Well, you form cliques, right? I mean, who does, who looks like me? What's my tribe? That kind of thing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like an ethnic tribe. It can be like, well, we're the same religion. And so therefore I don't, I could never marry a Muslim woman. So now I've got to get, and I'm not saying I'm me personally, but I'm just saying like, you couldn't do that because you have those convictions. And you, so what, what if I said, I don't, I would never date a Christian woman. What if I said that, would that make me guilty of the same anti-solidarity? Because that's really a tribe when you think about it. There's lots of ways to be, you know, ethnicity is one tribe of dozens of others. Human beings want that tribal connection, that, that bond, that, that, that development. And I think that's actually really what's lacking primarily in, in, in uh, Western societies right now is we don't, men don't form tribes. In fact, we're actively discouraged to form male only tribes. We'll still do it and we'll still make efforts to do it. And without even realizing we are, 
but we but it's discouraged well as for women it's all about solidarity and it doesn't matter whether you're what religion you are or where you're from what your your ethnicity is and it makes it are you a woman that's the sisterhood uber alice the sisterhood above everything else for men because for women communitarianism and egalitarianism is a natural part of the female machine like the natural part of the female mind for guys it's competition and so here we have competition but the question i wanted to ask is um and am I seeing this wrong? Because and you can answer me in the comments or in the in the chat here, because I'm gonna you, the live chat will be going on. This is on, but is hopefully that prompts some some conversation, because is it um, is it about like wanting to just get with the the women that look like you, or the women who believe like you, or the women who vote like you, or the women you happen to be at the same school, or in your community? I mean, is there some sort of like tribal? Like affiliation, I should say, to game. I think that's that's really a, kind of an important. I don't know if I've ever really even asked that because I see that all the time. It's being used, particularly in in, in the black manosphere right now. But here it is with a with a uh, with Akash, who is Indian, and his wife is Indian as well. So that's my question to you. I uh, will keep going. This is the that's extreme. Fun. Like yeah. Akash only dates brown. Oh, okay. Yeah, Akash was, has been with one girl in his life who is his wife. That's my wife. That's an Indian woman. So this woman is like loyal to me. through and through. Okay. And right. I, I understand it's not as important for y'all, but as an Indian, there's not a lot of us who are. Okay. I don't know if you caught that. This dude has only ever been with the chick that he's with. Now, some guys who are going to watch this traditional conservatives will go, yeah, right on. Good. You did it the right way, Akash. Yeah. Maybe from that respect and whatever your belief set is or whatever you're you're invested in, Okay, I understand the, the want for that. I got it. Okay, we've acknowledged your position. Now let's acknowledge another position here. He only has one woman for frame of reference when it comes to women. Can this guy speak knowledgeably about female nature? No, no, he can't. So. Famous. So whether you like it or not, people are looking at you as a role model. You guys have established yourselves as role models from simps to pimps which is another model I find kind of corny, but I, I looked into what you guys are about. And a lot of the shit is just childish, which is fine if you want to be funny. We just talked about how doctors ain't shit for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. We are not in any way life coaching. We are not in any way trying to help men outside of, hey, come have a laugh for a couple hours. Right. If you're going to paint yourself as life coaches and then say shit like, eh, you know what I mean? I just don't really fuck with black girls. Like I, guess, I guess my, my, cons my like... Okay, Fresh and Fit is not South Park. Okay, <laughs> there's, your, there's your quote for this show. Fresh and Fit is not South Park. It's not slapstick. It's not The Simpsons. Okay. Yes. Is it entertaining? Yes. Do they put on, does, does Myron put on various, you know, caps? How come that we didn't call him a racist for putting on a sombrero or putting on the, the uh, Middle Eastern, I don't know, whatever it is, the wrap on his head? How come we don't, that, that's okay. That we don't have a problem with that or him with Ninja Watcher. I mean, that's okay. But, when we start talking about with you know black women versus white women versus whatever then you have a problem with that then it's like well you guys are teachers you gotta you have a standard to live up to well what is it is is the nature of the show south park or is it you're you're there you're rolla tomasi right you know it's it's uh what is it here you go you know. hello there children how's it going Come on into the classroom children like it, is that the nature of their show no it's kind of like somewhere between those if i were to you know put a you know, position it somewhere, I guess. But none of these guys has the interest to really understand what that show is, what what their show is. And remember, the show's only been around for a year. Still, that's a lot of that's a lot of episodes and that's a lot of time. And their rise and their, you know, their popularity and their engagement, by the way, um, meteoric, right? Let's just I mean, I, I don't think I'm I'm uh, out of line in saying that they have skyrocketed from where they were this time last year. So people are taking notice, but again, guys like Akash, guys like Andrew, guys like the guy, the rest of the dudes who are in the studio here, they don't have the interest, man. They're the, they're the, let's watch a minute 30 video of this. And that. now I know everything I need to know about fresh and fit. Get the fuck out of here. So you're going to go at me. You're going to go at them. You're going to go at anybody, anybody on rule zero. You're going to go on at anybody come correct at least. Have a, like have your homework done. I've said this on the when I'm doing dressing down like haters and stuff like that. It's easy to dress you down. It's easy to dismantle, like just part by part dismantle you, because your your opinions, and that's what they are opinions, 
not factual, not counter arguments, not anything cogent or valid against like whatever the, the, the topic that I happen to be talking about or they're talking about. Your opinions really are based on ignorance and confident ignorance, just like the fat kid in Brazil. Oh, let me tell you why the, the iron rule of Tomasi number three is wrong, right? It throws that out there. By the way, it's, a, it's like a, a, what, a 12 minute, I don't watch it, but it's a 12 minute video. He mentions my, he mentions my name probably for, for like for four minutes of a 12 minute video. Everything else is sales pitch. Everything else is bullshit. Everything else is like ad hominem attacks, whatever. Thanks. What? Oh, let's have the next one. You know, what is it? A hate machine goes burr. It's pretty much what it is, but there's no meat to it. There's no cogent counter arguments to it. And why? Because they're intellectually lethargic. Just like Akash is intellectually lethargic, just like Andrew Schultz, intellectually lethargic. And that's pretty much where most hate comes from. And I know that Rich Cooper and, and other guys have said, you know, hate only comes from below, right? Well, hate comes from ignorance primarily. And it comes from the fact that people don't want to take the time to even understand what the hell it is that you're talking about. But Put them on the spot, put them on their show, put them in a one minute and 30 second video, and suddenly they're fucking experts. No, you're not experts. Uh, I did a little bit of homework on you guys. No, you didn't. Because if you did, you wouldn't be saying half of the shit that you are. That's how I know when somebody hasn't watched a 53 second video on my shorts. Because I look at the, t I know what the, I know what's in it. I know what I clipped it out of. And the people who are, you know, having an intelligent conversation about it in the comments there, they know that too. And when you go, yeah, what do you think, yo, look, he's got a ponytail. Oh, oh, I would never take advice from him. Fuck you. Bye. <laughs> drive by. <laughs> it's a drive by comment. That makes you look like an idiot, by the way. I'm happy to call out idiots now, too, when I decide to bother with them. I don't really bother with comments too much on my clips channel because it's chock full of drive by comments. Right? Just curiosity. I'm just curious. Is like, where does preference come from? Yeah. Like I was trying to think about this after I saw the clip and I was just like, why do I like what I like? I can and tell I you. really was thinking about that. Like who's, who decides that? Is it my life? Is it my surroundings? Like if I was raised in Mexico, I'm sure I would find Mexican girls beautiful. I would eat Mexican food. Like these would be my preferences. Funny thing is I'm a white guy. I grew up in inner city, Los Angeles, uh, until I, I was there until I was about 27. I found Lots of black women, very attractive. I found lots of one Vietnamese girl. I'll keep harping on that. Very attractive. Right? And <laughs> by the way, she could cook very well. So maybe there's a food aspect to it. I ain't, ain't going to say that. Maybe there's not something to that. But the reason why you have preferences, um, Andrew, and make, since you are clearly need some education in this, men have preferences and men have fetishes primarily because that is what has been sexually rewarding sexually reinforcing in the past we go back to the same watering hole you want to know why guys keep going back to an old girlfriend how do i get her back or like you help a dude have you ever done this you help a guy out and you go okay man here you know he's your shoulder to cry and you're like it's come on man we're gonna go lift we're gonna get you back on the on the, on the horse man we're gonna I'm, i've lord knows i've done this a lot in my my illustrious Rolo Tomasi career, right? You get guys in, you help them out and everything. You get them back on the horse. You get them on game. You get them out there. They got, they start spinning plates and like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they meet one other girl and this like the special girl. And they go, okay, man, I met my dream girl, Rolo. I got it from here. Thanks. Bye. But that dream girl or that dream girl is a girl that looks just like the girl he just dumped or, or dumped him, I should say. Or it, she has the same sort of personality traits the same sort of